Hi everyone. I um, thought I'd do a quick video on my new... Well, it's a 2020, it's not a 2021. Um, the 2021 apparently has bold new graphics. And that's about it. So I decided to get another 2020. Um, replace the TX300 Husky with the KTM 300 XC TPI. Um, no real preference either way over whether I got a Husky or a KTM. Um, I got the KTM, I got a good deal on it. There are some advantages to the KTM over the Husky. Um, I'm going to run through those points right now. And also what I've done to set the bike up so it's ready for me to hit the trails. And I did take it out for a quick run today. It's pretty muddy out there, so it was just a quick ride just to see if it was all running good. But yeah, um, we'll start at the front. Um, first thing I do is pull the Dunlop 8081 tires off and fit the Metis tires. Um, I run these tires, they're a, they're a soft compound, um, soft compound front tire with a enduro mousse in the front. Um, I run the soft lightweight mousses in the front and back. Um, the front one, if I was doing a really high speed race, I'd run a firmer mousse, but I run the softer one for hard enduro. Um, when I have the wheel off, I actually pull the pull the um, little spaces out and fill that up with grease in behind where the bearing is because they're actually dry. There's, there's, there's virtually no grease in there. If there is grease, I didn't see it. <laughs> so I pull those caps off, put it up, with, fill it up with grease and then put them back in again. Um, it's just going to prolong the life of the, um, the bearings. The next thing I do is fit a fan. The XC doesn't come with a wiring harness for plugging in a fan using the factory computer to turn it on and off. Um, whether it did or not, I'd want to run a switch. So I run a wire that's in a, in a bit of shield, shielding. I undo this, this um, cover here and run the wire up inside that so it doesn't get chafed and it doesn't foul with the um, radiator cap. Up to the handlebar and then I run one of these switches. These can also be used as a map switch. I don't run a map switch. In fact, there was map switch on the Husky that I had. I never ever used it on setting number two, which is the softer map. Um, so these switches here are available from me for about 15 bucks and you can use them as a map switch or you can use them as a fan switch. Nice, pretty durable, never had a problem with them. They work well. Um, the next thing I do is move the handlebar clamps. Now it's going to be a, bit, a little bit hard to see here, but the the, the the handlebar clamps are actually offset so as much as the XC doesn't have multiple points to bolt on through the top triple clamp you can actually turn the 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 bracket that holds the handlebar right around and then that puts them in the more forward position now I know some tall riders who actually run it in the backwards position um, I just sort of don't like the feel of the handlebar being in my lap, especially going up steep hills. We're mainly doing hard enduro. We're not um, just doing easy fire roads or anything like that. So we need to be able to get over the front of the bike as much as we can when we're going up the crazy big hills. Uh, another thing that I do is change the clutch lever. The factory Brembo lever is it's yeah I know it's blue it was actually for a husky but whatever it fits um, the Brembo ones have got a little bit of a rolled front edge and it's really uncomfortable to be holding on to it so 
Now, it's a, as I say, it's blue because I didn't have a red or orange or whatever colour one. But these have got a more of a flat point just here, and I'll probably put some hockey tape or something on to hold them, uh, to, to make it easier to hold on to. But um, having that flatter setting there, and I moved the... I moved the um, master cylinder quite a way in on the handlebars. You'll see here it's it's a long way in. That allows me to use one finger operation and if I'm starting to get a little bit tired or the finger's getting a little bit sore, I can run two fingers and it's still comfortable to, to do it with two fingers. Um, these levers tend to have just a slight bit of a, a leverage advantage for some reason. Don't know why. So I do like to use them. Um, they're really, really cheap. They they fold back out. I've never broken one off before. I don't think I've even bent one. But another thing that I do, you know, in certain series of racing, they might get a little bit upset. I still leave the part of the ball on the end, but I cut some of it off. Um, the reason I do that is if you're pulling the clutch and you've still got that big ball on there, it comes in and it hits your finger. So I don't like the thing hitting the finger and um, especially if you're pulling the clutch the right the way in because it's actually easier to hold a clutch all the way in than it is part way out. So sometimes if you're pulling it in, you want to you want to pull it in and let that lever, you can see here it's going straight past my finger. So yep, that's another thing that I do. Um, Got to take the seat off to do the wiring because I run a wire straight to the battery. There's a fuse on the um, fan. I've just taken the fan off the other bikes and just kept putting it onto the newer bikes. They all fit the same from about 15 onwards. Um, the fan that I use have used lately is a um, SPAL fan that I bought online. I think it comes out of Germany. Um, bought it on eBay. They're about a hundred bucks delivered, pretty cheap. And they seem to be a bit smooth, smoother operation and have better wiring on them than what the trail tech ones do. Now the trail tech ones are quite common to be factory fitted on some of the KTMs and Huskies that come with a fan, but I, I don't like them. Um, shitty wiring, the wires come out, the, the little thermostat on them screws up you're just endless problems with them and i've never had a problem with one of the spal fans spal fans um here's one here with the sticker still on it there we go there's a part number there we go so now this one here is an xc so this is shane saw's bike he's had it for about a year and a half or two years and that one's plug and play. So the XCW comes with the wiring harness already built in for the fan. So it's just a plug and play and there's a relay that goes into the airbox. But in the case of the XC, no, that doesn't happen. Um, I go through, check the air fork pressure. At the moment, I've dropped down to about 123 PSI on the forks. I used to run higher, but Lately, because I've been doing more slower, hard enduro stuff, um, just need a little bit more um, com complacency with the suspension. So running it a little bit softer now keeps the front end a little bit lower for the steep hill climbs and um, I seem to like that a little bit better. The back as well, I run, generally I run the Metis, um 454, it's a double green tire. It's really soft. Um, it's not an FIM tire, so if you're watching this from Europe, probably not gonna be able to race with it. But um, certainly here in North America, we don't have any problems with what we what tires we run. I pull the um, caps off when I'm putting the moose in and put grease in those bearings too, because they're pretty dry. Another thing I do is I change out the foot pegs. And now I've been running these Raptor pegs on my bikes. It's 
since 2017, I think, when the new model came out. And these are the same pegs that I'm putting on each bike, taking the factory ones off, putting them on the old bike I'm selling, and putting these pegs on. Now, the factory pegs, I can wreck a set of those in a couple of weeks. Aluminum pegs, I can wreck them in a day, in an hour or so. So I've got lots of one of the aluminum pegs that don't have matching sets and I don't run them anymore because they're absolute garbage. Um, but these things are a work of art, the titanium. They could be sharpened up, but if they're too sharp, they grip your boots and you can't get your foot off if you do need to, to dab or something like that. So I don't mind them being just a little bit blunt. Um, they do tend to pack up a little bit more than the factory pegs which can be a little bit of a bastard but that's the price you pay right um, give them a kick while you're riding it cleans them out now i've covered this before this is the tread that i bought off chris birch i got a couple of these for the break um, they work really well they put the put the pad further back to your foot so you can actually reach the damn thing which you can't do on a factory one for some reason. Don't know why they make the levers longer and longer until we can't reach them. Another thing, I run the Acherby skid plate. Now this thing's only about 70 bucks-ish. I don't know, haven't looked at the invoice, but um, they're not very expensive. You can get them at a lot of places. Rocky Mountain has them, MX1 Canada has them. Anyone selling Acherby stuff has them. Um, the neat thing about them is they run a link skid on them as well. You can see there. So they have protection and a slider for the linkage. Um, I like to run the linkage bikes. Um, I got asked, why didn't you buy, buy an XCW? The XCW, I just don't like the PDS. does strange things sometimes. PDS has a little different squish. So yes, you can preload and jump up stuff a little bit better but every now and again it'll just do something stupid it'll skip out on you it'll it's just unpredictable uh, linkage is a lot more predictable 90 percent of dirt bikes have linkage there is a reason for it um, it changes the ratio you don't get as much feedback from the brake coming back through the bike with a linkage Linkage is the way to go, I feel. Um, sometimes I change the header pipe to put a gnarly on. If I'm doing, if I know I'm not gonna be doing any flat out riding, I, I do run a gnarly on the front. It gets a little bit more low down, you lose a bit on the top end. When I raced Silver Star last year, I put the stock pipe back on and I screwed the power valve out one turn. Um, they say, oh, don't touch the power valve. Well, screw that thing out one turn. It comes into power ba band a lot earlier. Gives you um, much better throttle response, even for doing zaps and, and, and uh, short hill climbs. It just allows that power band to, to spring into action a little bit easier. Um, I do run a FMF Turbine Core 2.1. It's not on the bike at the moment. It is currently sitting over here in its original packaging, but it is the one off the old bike and they have a Forest Service approved spark arrestor in it, which it's not a screen style park spark arrestor. It works in a slightly different way and they don't tend to clog up. So I do need to put that back onto the bike. It's a five minute job, haven't done it yet. Um, other than that, I go over, just sort of check everything. I do need to go through and check the sag. I have a digital sag scale that uh, I use to check it. It clips onto the back. It's a really good bit of gear. I got that from RMR Suspensions. And I do need to set that up. I run about a 35 static and about 105 riders sag with my gear on. So that sort of gives you an idea. That's sort of normal settings for most bikes. I find it works good for me and pretty good neutral turn in. If I find it's not turning in so good, 
I'll, I'll drop the forks up on the up in the triple clamps uh, the short ride I had today I didn't have any problems with it at, and it's actually dropped down quite a long way how it is but given that I haven't accounted for my little bit of extra weight um, and I haven't adjusted the back the front might need to be changed once I set that sag up um, what else now for the really really gnarly steep downhills and if anyone that <laughs> knows me and <laughs> comes riding with me they'll attest to some of the hills that we have here that are just ridiculously stupidly dangerously steep um, I have been running what's called an ox brake hydraulic ox brake here it is sitting under here um, it's basically a mountain bike lever it's sitting under here I s literally slip the bike into neutral <laughs> and ride it down like a mountain bike um, it's got a little hydraulic cylinder that sits just here so it's in between the brake the, the little um, joint that goes up in here in fact I'll grab one out of the little tool cupboard here where are we here it is this is the little little thing that it replaces so that usually bolts on there and this little hydraulic cylinder replaces this and expands when you pull the lever in. Very basic, very simple. Um, it's designed okay, it works quite well, but if he had it gone about a half a millimeter or one millimeter smaller in the piston, it would have given much better feel at the lever. Um, that's the only issue I have with it. It would have had slightly better braking force if it was running um, a slightly smaller. No, sorry, I'm completely wrong here. It was running a slightly bigger cylinder in in this little um, this little thing here. If it was running slightly bigger, it would have better feel at the lever. It'd have more travel in the lever, and it it it'd actually put out more force here. So at the moment, it's a little bit too small. I would run a bigger one, give you a better feel, better braking power. I'm using it less and less these days. I came from using a recluse and a left-hand rear brake for a lot of years and going out riding and doing a lot more hard enduro, I found that I needed to um, use the foot brake and a proper clutch, of course. So. I did miss the left-hand rear brake on the really, really gnarly downhills, but I'm using it less and less. So I think I'll get to a point, six or eight months' time, I'll probably take it off. But it is a good device um, to use, even riding with some pro riders who are bulldogging their dot bikes down behind me and I'm riding down because I've got that little bit more control. Um, the KTM comes with Brembo brakes front and rear. Now on the TX300i, I changed the rear caliper out and put a Brembo one on so that I could stop the damn thing. Um, they say, oh well, the Magura's got more um, got more braking ability. Uh, you know, as far as feel, but I just think they don't work at all really <laughs> they're not very good so that's the old Magura one um, didn't even really use it because I knew that the Magura didn't work on the previous bike so just changing out the rear caliper is good enough if you want to get a little bit more braking power for a um, on, a, on, on the Husky some people they don't care doesn't bother them if you use really soft pads it'll it'll slow down pretty quick um, other than that the bike is basically stock I like the stock radiator shrouds um, they're really strong but they're really hardy um, yeah you bend the odd radiator for, if the bike falls on its side but it's going to either damage something else if you're running the aluminum radiator braces but the other problem with the aluminum 
radiator braces is they tend to stop the airflow into the radiator so your bike's going to run a hell of a lot hotter and you're going to have all sorts of problems so i've found over the last few years that the stock ones are really strong so i run those um, i also run the flag hand guards i don't like the ones i don't like the pressure on the side of my hand from the wrap arounds if you're a rider that tends to be fairly abusive on your bikes and you're crashing a hell of a lot, um, I would probably run the wraparounds until which time you get better. And once you get to a point that you're riding better, the freedom of running the flag, flag handguards are um, it's almost kind of liberating not to have the ones wrapping around. Um, the ODI, ODE, ODI, or whatever they're called, the stock... Um, hand grips that come on these things are incredibly good i love these things they clamp on they just have a little allen key holding them on somewhere here there it is here and that one is replaces the throttle tube so even when these get really worn the the grip itself doesn't come doesn't come loose and they're easy to change out you just undo the allen key and and off they come and with that one just replace the throttle tube um yeah it's all pretty um it's all pretty stock I like to run a pretty stock bike um i do ride the do run the two ride um cover for the the oil filler um i haven't put it on here yet i have one in the cupboard ready to go i do sell this product for yaram levy um, he lives down in mexico and is a very very talented guy at designing little bits and pieces for bikes um, he's very well known for his gps holders um, but these things are pretty neat they, they just slide over the slide over the cap and um, help prevent the dirt build up um, i think i've got a bunch of them here we're still working on the website so we haven't done anything about it yet but um, these are all the switches for you. you can use them as a map switch or you can use them as a so yeah, these are the these are little devices here. Um, as I say, we sell them. They're not very expensive. There's one for a bike with yellow, and there's some orange. I will put one of those on the bike today. And another thing that he sells for people that are um, a little bit a little bit um, what would you call it mechanically challenged. That's probably the the best way to put it this little device here is really quite cool um, i actually gave a couple to my friends who are mechanically challenged um, and i was always giving them a hard time about their brake adjustment uh not their brake adjustment their, their chain adjustment so what you do is when you're adjusting your chain you actually just slide this under the chain right here right right there you just slide that under your chain and that's the correct spacing for the amount of slack that you need on your chain so um, if anyone's after those up here in Canada, they're not really sh worth shipping to the US. Um, Uram Levy can send them to you down there. But up in Canada, we have them in stock and uh, we, we get them up here in bulk. So they're a really neat little product. Um, Want to work closely more with him with different products because he's got some really neat stuff. Um, I don't... I used to run a, a recluse clutch cover because I had the cover left over from having a recluse, but I sold the recluse. I don't have the clutch cover. I've never really poked any holes in cases before, so it's not a problem that I'm having. Maybe one day I might be unlucky enough for that to happen, but at the moment I haven't had any problems. and It's a, it's a risk that I'm prepared to take to run the one that is actually slightly trimmer, like it doesn't take up as much room. There's more room for the brake. There's more room for your boot. Um, the stock cover, I, I feel, is uh, pretty good. So yeah, other than that, I'll probably just check a few little things over. Apparently the oil pumps on these used to come loose. I'm not sure. Where is it? Right under here. <laughs> My one seems tight. Um, Putting the fan on, you don't have to drain the radiator out. All you do is um, undo the top hose here. 
Un take well, you have to have the tank off, but uh, undo the two radiator mounts here, and all you have to do is move the radiator forward, and you can get a you can get the long a long tool in with the the Torx bit in to do up the screws on the other side for the fan. So yeah, other than that, they come with a gripper seat cover. Actually, seems pretty good. The earlier model didn't, so Shane saw put the um, Attack Graphics one on his, which these are probably one of the better seat covers that are out there. I like them. Rocky Mountain has them for about $34, I think, US. So they're a pretty good bit of gear. The only other thing that I'll probably end up putting in the forks, because the air forks do build up a little bit of pressure in the outer section, is I'll probably run some um, fork bleeders on these. On the previous bike I didn't, I just unscrewed them every now and again and let the, the built up air out. So yeah, other than that, I run a pretty stock bike. So what is it? Tires, foot bags, brake, uh, setting up the positioning, setting up the sag. I'm gonna check my suspension settings from the TX. I wrote them down as I always do. So I'll go through the clickers on this. Always run the, um, I always unwind the, the, the high speed about one full turn. So this outer nut on the back, I always undo it about one full turn. So if you're doing some big hits over logs and that's too firm, it'll, it'll, it'll tend to make the back of the bike really kick up. So if you undo it, it allows the bike to run through a whole heap more of its travel before it um, bottoms out and starts to kick up on you. Um, I don't run special coolant, I don't do, I don't pull the head stem bearings out and grease them. Probably could, but quite honestly I don't own the bikes long enough. Um, you know, I run anywhere between about 85 hours and 175 hours on my bikes and then resell them. The reason I changed out early from the TX is that I got a smoking deal on this. And there could possibly, maybe unlikely, but there could possibly be a slight shortage of bikes mid-year and through summer when people are getting back into riding um, because they were, the factory was closed due to the COVID thing. But uh, I don't run a pipe protector. Um, if you run a pipe protector, it can start damaging other things. I'm better off to get a few little dings on the pipe than I am to damage other parts of the bike by having a hard um, pipe protector. It's also very heavy to run some of the pipe protectors and they end up wrecking the pipes because heat builds up and behind them and, and, and makes a metal fatigue and crack. So you'll end up just cracking the pipe and they'll wear out. Whereas if it gets dinged, it can be repaired and put back on the bike. So yeah, other than that, she's she's good to go. And I'll be riding it tomorrow and Sunday and Monday and probably Wednesday and Friday and then all weekend again. See you later, folks.